Saskatchewan Conservative MP Andrew Scheer was born and raised in Ottawa, where he caught the political bug and worked in the office of the Leader of the Opposition. But it was love that led him to Saskatchewan, and it was obviously an enduring love, since he's now the father of three and the Member of Parliament for Regina Capel. Andrew Scheer joins me now to talk all about life beyond politics. Andrew Scheer, welcome to Beyond Politics. It's really great to have you here. I'm just thrilled to be invited. Now, how did you first get bitten? How were you first bitten by the political bug? Well, I, I guess it traces back to when I was a paper boy. Uh, and uh, every day before I'd go deliver the newspapers, I'd, I'd read it. And uh, in, in, in Ottawa, the newspaper's full of political news, and it it's, uh, always features prominently on the front pages and things like that. And I just found myself from a very young age reading a lot about it and following it and, and day in day out reading the newspaper at you know, 9, 10, 11 years old I just got more and more involved, uh, more and more interested in it and, and I guess that's what led me to where I am today. What was, like, what formed that interest? Because there are two things there and I'm going to follow up with this question but most 9, 10, 11 year olds are not reading the newspaper in the morning and uh, most of them really don't even Fa politics doesn't factor in. Mm -hmm. So what was it about politics that was of interest to you? I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really tough to say. I, I know that uh, I, I've always had a bit of a, a rebellious streak in me. Have you really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I always had a tough time with, uh, with you know, uh, th being told what to do at a younger age. And, you know, uh, if I didn't understand why I had to do something, I always had a tough time with it, you know. Oh, these, you must <laughs> have been a joy to <laughs> A joy. To, yeah. A joy. Uh, you know, and so uh, I, I, just this kind of questioning authority thing from a younger age uh, led me to understand, kind of feel that uh, in, in Canada, uh, government plays a very large role in a lot of different spheres of, of life and uh, and there is this big authority figure uh, other than my parents there's, <laughs> and, and my teachers you know there's government and uh, I just became more and more interested and thought that if if uh, if this is how it is then it would be good to be informed about about uh, the different issues that are going on and uh, and I, I try to play some role in, in it in, in deciding uh, or helping uh, these decisions uh, get made. So I know that sounds weird for a 10 or 11 year old to well, be thinking those thoughts. I, I, I can't say for sure that that's how I thought back then, but kind of looking back, I think that might be subconsciously uh, what, what might have been going on. But I remember from a very young age, I, I remember very clearly uh, you know, certain elections where I would have been very young, uh, the 88 U.S. election, I remember the, the Bush Dukakis debates and, uh, and then the 93 uh, federal election uh, here, I remember following it and uh, reading, you know, following the, the leaders' tours and things like that. So uh, I would have been uh, 14 years old and still kind of following it and watching the news with my dad <laughs> every day after supper, turn on the nightly news and, uh, and we'd watch all these things. We'd watch U.S. Uh, politics, Canadian politics, provincial politics. And uh, uh, so I guess you can blame it on my dad <laughs> for uh, indoctrinating me in, uh, in the world of politics. At what stage did you realize that other kids your age weren't doing this? <laughs> very, very early on. <laughs> uh, you know, at the lunch, uh, at the lunch table in high school, uh, you know, if, if you brought up the subject of, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, balanced budget or tax bracket creep or, you know, some of the things that were issues uh, back in 94 and 95, I very quickly realized that uh, you were the only one talking. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, you know, young kids, especially at that age, uh, it's just not something they're engaged in, not something they're interested in. And, and that make, you know, I, I, I realized I was the odd, <laughs> the odd person to have that kind of uh, level of interest in it. But, uh, but Did I'm glad you ever try to tone it down because of that? I mean, did you ever think to yourself, okay, this is seriously going to impact my ability to get a girlfriend or <laughs> whatever a kid thinks when they're a little concerned that they're different from their peers? Mm -hmm. Did you ever try to tone it down? I guess I just realized why I didn't get a date in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, and me both. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah f for sure, uh, you know, I, that wasn't my only interest, uh, of course, but uh, I, I did realize that it uh, it's not something that a lot of people have in common at that age and uh, so you know I, I, I was pretty athletic and mm -hmm. and, and uh, so obviously uh, engaged in some other normal 
uh, teenage activities, but uh, always had that always had that love of it. And I, I had a, a great history teacher in, in, in high school, and I uh, used to love chatting with him about politics after class. And uh, th that I think also helped me uh, stay interested in it. When you have a teacher who can really connect with you and, and uh, help help you understand things, and who had the same kind of passion for it, uh, I think really added to it. What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, well, I. I wasn't really sure until I was uh, in, in university. Uh, at, at some point, uh, I did think uh, uh, journalism might be a, a field that I'd be interested in. Um, I, I, I always did have an interest in politics, so I always did kind of see myself doing something in that field. And uh, but uh, you know, various times I had other interests. You know, uh, had considered a military career uh, for, for for some point when I was hmm. in in high school. Uh, towards the end, I. I uh, was kind of thinking uh, about that for a little bit, or the RCMP. I, I had some yeah, inclination for that. I had some friends who were planning on going down down that path. But it wasn't really until I was in university that uh, I I got involved more on a uh, on a hands-on way with with a political party and with some uh, elections that I really got into it. That, that I really saw that this was an exciting uh, field uh, with a lot of great people, a chance to meet so many different kinds of people. And, uh, and, and play out what I believe is to be a very positive role in, in society. Where did you go to university? At the University of Ottawa. Okay. And then I finished up at the University of Regina. Right. Mm -hmm. And you moved right into the political sphere at that point. You started working on the Hill. Yes. Uh, my first election campaign was the 99 uh, provincial election here in Ontario. Uh, and then uh, I was working when I was at the University of Ottawa. I started working in the opposition leader's office uh, for, at the time it was Preston Manning. Uh, and uh, It must have been an interesting time to work there. You would have gone it, through a lot of <laughs> changes in a short <laughs> period of time. It was fascinating. It was, it was such a great experience. And uh, I, really, uh, I really am fortunate that I was able to uh, get involved at that age uh, in, in, in a meaningful way. But yeah, it was, it was a, a very, a very uh, turbulent time politically. There was, uh, the, after the uh, the 2000, uh, it was just kind of in the lead up to the 2000 election. So, you know, the Reform Party was uh, looking for a way to uh, unite the right, uh, as the as the phrase went at the time, and uh, uh, formed the Canadian Alliance, had a leadership uh, change, and then uh, fought and the 2000 election, and then another yeah. leadership phase. So it was a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, a change. lot. Of, yeah, every every week was interesting. <laughs> a lot of Did that turn you off at all? This idea that there was just constant change, or was that actually one of the factors that made it more interesting? For me, at the time, I found it uh, more interesting. Mm -hmm. There was always uh, a lot of uh, things going on, uh, uh, a, a lot of uh, you know undercurrents, and, and it was fascinating for me to see being on the inside of, of, of part of it, you know, in a very small way, uh, how based on what I knew was going on, how that got presented in the media, and then, again, talking to some of my friends and their families, what the public perception was. So I really saw that, you know, the, the phrase that Ottawa can be a bit of a bubble sometimes. A bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see really how what you think is just the most important thing going on in the world, you just get back into the real world and people don't even know what you're talking about. So, um, but I, I did, I did, I, it didn't turn me off at all because I thought that, uh, for all the difficulties that happen when there is a leadership race, and for all the, you know, s sometimes negative things happen and, and negative things get said about people that you're used to working with, um, they they do also bring out some of the best in people, and, and you you have people that are very passionate about ideas, uh, you know, s uh, whether it was Press Manning or Stockwell Day or then Stephen Harper, uh, they had uh, they had real real reasons for running and, and and great great amount of passion for the work they did. You stayed for a while, but you didn't stay forever. You ended up in Regina. Mm -hmm. How did you end up in Regina, <laughs> from having grown up and worked and lived in Ottawa your whole life to that point? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I met a girl, <laughs> and that's that's what brought me. The age old story. Uh, that's right. I go west, young man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was at the University of Ottawa, right. and uh, and my my now wife uh, was uh, taking her electives at the University of Ottawa as well. That's the short version of the story. Uh, longer version: her her friend was dating my friend in a long distance relationship. Thought we'd be good for each other, and we met a few times over the summer. and And she decided to do her electives at Ottawa U for a semester, 
and uh, we got pretty serious and I thought, uh, well, I can, she moved up to Ottawa for a while, maybe I'll move out to Regina for a while, let her finish her, uh, so she can finish her program. And uh, at the time as well, uh, I, you know, I, I thought it'd be exciting to, to see another part of Canada and had uh, uh, never been uh, out west for any particular uh, length of time. Uh, so we moved out there and she finished up her degree and I finished up mine and uh, just fell in love with the province. Just, really? Yeah, just fantastic. What and was it about it? Yeah, for me it's the people uh, and uh, I don't know if it's, the, if, the hard, if it's the hard winters or if it's the fact that a lot of people are from smaller towns and even Regina, uh, well it's a, it's, it's a major city, it's still, uh, it still has that kind of small town feel where you, you just know so many people and I just found that uh, uh, you know, you just know your neighbors, you end up knowing the people in your community uh, a great deal. They're very warm and uh, just gr great people. And I really liked the, uh, uh, the affordability, uh, the, the um, community spirit, and uh, I, I, just, I just really enjoyed it. I, I missed Ottawa, I missed my parents, but I really did think that, uh, uh, I, I, and I believe that Saskatchewan is, uh, is a great place to live. Now, you could have done something political there too, but instead you went into insurance. Mm -hmm. Was it insurance? It was, yes. Why insurance? <laughs> well, I thought that uh, I wanted something a little bit more exciting than, uh, than politics. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, well, I, I, I had volunteered uh, on a provincial election campaign right. when I was out there, and I just got the sense that uh, uh, politics is very cyclical, it's very... Uh, you know, it's very unpredictable, and I, and I thought it, it would probably be best for a young guy who'd just been married to, to, uh, to, to, to maybe go in a different field with a little bit more stability. And um, and I uh, I met somebody who was in the insurance business, and uh, he was talking to me about it, and I thought, you know, that sounds like something I, I I'd be interested in and, and and could do. And so I started working for a small firm in Regina, and really really f uh, found that very enjoyable. Uh, a lot of the same things in politics about meeting people and getting to know people, uh, same thing with insurance, you're meeting with, with clients, you get to know, uh, uh, meet a lot of people and then you try to... And you get um, to know their issues too, absolutely, I guess, and, yeah. their, and their problems and, and what providing, they're trying to deal with. Trying to match up what their needs are with what the services that your firm can provide and, and uh, there's a whole bunch of customer relations things that I, I found myself very good at and that I enjoyed. And uh, and uh, really, really got to know the industry and, and started to uh, get uh, higher levels of accreditation and then thought that this was uh, this was would be a great industry for me to to continue in until <laughs> until the uh, as they say you know if it's in your blood you get <laughs> kind of uh, drawn in and I drawn I, in I, that or it's blood poisoning <laughs> and blood you just can't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. It's really tough to shake. <laughs> Um, but uh, I started volunteering again, and uh, I, I, I just thought, you know, it would just be a, a, maybe an evening, a weekend. There's a lot going on. Uh, the um, the conservative, par the PC party, and the and the K Alliance were formally trying to merge, and uh, there was a lot of. Uh, things going on. We needed people to organize the, uh, the 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 meetings for both sides, PC and Canadian Alliance, to see if the merger was going to go through. And then that led right into a leadership race. And um, and so I, I was volunteering, uh, just just going out with the riding association, just helping to organize the meetings, helping to get sell memberships and get people kind of aware, you know, excited about what was going on. And, uh, you know, I just you realized that insurance just couldn't hold a candle <laughs> to that kind of passion. Well, I still still really enjoyed it. Uh, but, yeah, you know, when when you're out, uh, uh, you know, helping organizing meetings and mm -hmm. having uh, a whole lot of activity going on at the riding level and members of parliament coming in from other parts of the country to kind of you know, deliver rousing speeches about issues and things like that, I just thought, you know, I'd spend my day in the insurance office looking forward to what I was doing that evening and I just kind of realized that if that's where uh, if that's where my passion was yeah. why well, maybe maybe try to uh, get back into it okay so recreate this conversation for me you go home and you tell your wife honey I am thinking of running for parliament against a veteran MP who's been there forever mm -hmm. um, what do you think? <laughs> what was her reaction? Well, I think her first reaction, uh, might, her initial reaction might have been kind of the, 
pat, patting on the head, okay, well, you know, if <laughs> you go ahead then and, and give it your best shot type of thing. Uh, but, uh, but once I, I kind of uh, sat down and kind of mapped it out, what I, what I thought I could do and, and um, why I thought it was important, uh, uh, she, she very quickly became supportive, you know, and, and I think your first reaction when it's like someone saying, you know, uh, I'm going to go try out for the NFL. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck. But when you kind of realize if someone's put a lot of thought and effort into it that it, it is achievable, and she very quickly became, I mean, she was very supportive right from the get-go. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was probably a little bit shocking uh, t to her and to her family and, and to my family. Did you have kids at this point? No, not at that you time. You didn't, eh? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you run, and did you think you were going to win? Yeah, I always, I always knew it was possible for me to win. It was, uh, as you mentioned, it was a very tough seat. Uh, it had been held by the NDP uh, in one shape or another because of redistribution uh, since 1968. And uh, the, the gentleman that I was running against had, had been there for uh, well over 30 years. Right, uh, this was Lauren Nystrom. Lauren Nystrom, yeah. yeah. And a uh, very well-known MP uh, with, a, with, with quite a national profile. But uh, I thought it was important to run the issues I believe in, uh, the, the issues that were being debated at the time, I thought that I, I, could, I, I, I could do it. I thought I could c c communicate with people and explain why I felt it was important for not only myself to run, but, to, but for the party I represented to, to win. And um, I, because I had had some experience on campaigns, I knew you know, if I can just get enough people together and build a bit of a team, uh, I, I, I think I have a real shot here. I think we have a good message, and I, I, I think I have uh, s some some extra abilities on my own end that I can add to it. And I, I never believed, uh, I never believed that it was out of reach. I always knew that if I, if I worked hard, and if I showed the voters that that uh, I was worthy of their support, that I could do it. When you arrived in Ottawa as an MP and not as a staffer. What was that like? What was the difference for you walking into the House and knowing that you were there to actually represent constituents, not just to make sure that your leader or, you know, someone had briefing notes? Yeah. It's, it's a special feeling, that's for sure. When you think of uh, the people back in the riding that trust you, delegated you to represent them, uh, it is very uh, awe-inspiring, and 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 I've, I'm very cognizant of that responsibility. Um, the first time I, I I came back to Ottawa was uh, very meaningful. Uh, I'll never forget it. My my colleagues from Regina were traveling with me, and we were coming down the the escalator at uh, at the Ottawa airport, and I didn't know it, but my mom had come out to meet me. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, you know, she's very excited. It was the first time I had seen her in a number of months. So it was uh, my dad was there as well, and they're kind of proud parents. And I got a little bit of teasing from my from colleagues. Your colleagues that, <laughs> mom and dad were coming mom to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, very a very special moment for me, uh, despite the the ribbing I got. Uh, but uh, you know, it was it was just one of those things that when the first time you get up in the House of Commons and. Uh, I'm very cognizant of the history and uh, all the stuff that goes on there, and it, it, it's it's very meaningful to me. And, and I don't take that I don't take this position lightly. I, I do know that uh, it's not about me; it's about what people back home expect of me and want me to do. And I try to remind myself of that every day. That you, sometimes, like I said, you can get caught up in things here, and you can think that inside politics stuff is the most important thing going on but uh, you need that reality check and you need to make sure that you're grounded in your riding for sure. I have to imagine that you feel pretty grounded when you go home because since um, becoming an MP you and your wife have gone to have three children. <laughs> How do you keep sane? <laughs> yeah, th three elections, three children. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been challenging and I have to give a you know, big word of thanks to my wife for being so supportive and so flexible and, and so accommodating uh, f for this kind of lifestyle. Because honestly, <coughs> I don't think I would have been able to do it. <laughs> Truly, if I were your wife with three kids at home and you were gone every week, I would not necessarily be in full mental Gung health. Gung-ho-ness, yeah. <laughs> Truthfully. Well, uh, it's, it's, it, is, it is tough, and we do try to balance it off. So they will come up to Ottawa from time to time. Okay. And we'll spend a good chunk of, of time here right. to cut back on the traveling and cut back on time away but that is still our primary home. Have and you thought uh, of moving your family here and, and keeping an apartment and, I mean a, a small residence yeah. in your riding? 
It's t we have had those conversations. It's very difficult. Uh, on the one hand, I feel it's important as an MP to to be close to, right. to the people I represent and be yeah. accessible and to have that connection with the community. Uh, on the other hand, I do have a priority also as a father to, to spend as much time with my children as possible. So we haven't yet found that balance. And uh, my wife has a great support network in Regina. Her mother and her sister uh, and her whole family is there, her grandparents. And so they pitch in a lot. And I owe them a, a big debt of gratitude as well for, for helping uh, my wife out when I'm in Ottawa. But uh, a lot of the young MPs who have family, um, we're all kind of in the same boat. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a number of us uh, that have ch children, and, and I don't know if any one of us have found the perfect answer yet. It's a real challenging in, uh, profession uh, to be a young mother, a young father. And Where do you live when you're in Ottawa? I uh, sleep in the same bed I slept in uh, when I was in high school, elementary school. I stay with mom and dad. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> Do they wait up for you? <laughs> well, you know, it's, sometimes it's funny, you know. You're uh, getting red, so I've <laughs> got to assume the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. So, sometimes. Uh, it, it's funny. Uh, my, my parents like to you know, uh, visit with me. I like to visit with them. So sometimes when I'm going out in the morning, they'll say, what time do you think you'll be back? And I'll say, oh, you know, maybe 7 o'clock or so. And then invariably, you know, I'll have a, a supper meeting or, uh, or you know, this ho the house will sit late and I end up stuck in my office returning phone calls or things like that and I come home at 9 and I thought you said you'd be home at 7. Do you call <laughs> to say I won't be home for dinner, Mom? I should, <laughs> but okay. that kind of rebellious streak from when I was in high school. Comes back. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, I, I like it. It's. Uh, I think you're super lucky because, yeah, frankly, the, the fact of the matter is that most MPs, they're, they're lucky to get hors d'oeuvres for dinner and then they go home to their you know apartment with another MP or on their own mm -hmm. and go to bed and wake up and do the same thing so I would love to go home to my mom and dad and know I had a home cooked meal and <laughs> absolutely bacon it's, and eggs for breakfast <laughs> it's great and uh, yeah it's, it's great on a lot of levels it, it saves uh, it saves the taxpayers money because I'm, I'm yeah. staying with mom and dad and not not at hotels You're still living off your parents living off my parents <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just when you think you're independent. <laughs> That's right. You're an MP now, <laughs> living with mom and dad. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, you know, auto can be a bit of a lonely place for yeah. for MPs who who are far away from home and far away from their family. So it's nice that I can have uh, uh, my family. And my sister lives just nearby. Oh, great! Uh, so I get to see her kids and, and her family, and uh, I get to on a personal level, it's great. I I, I really enjoy it. I I, th I think they enjoy having me around. Uh, uh, they haven't uh, kicked you out complained yet. yet. You haven't yeah. been kicked to the curb. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my mom, from time to time, will will drive me crazy by you know uh, doing my laundry for me. And, and I say, how can that possibly? Well, drive you I just crazy? feel bad. I just feel bad that you know she shouldn't have to do that. And and I I I do it myself. But you know I'll yeah. go home for the weekend and she'll come back and I'll come back. Oh, I did yeah. all your laundry for you. Like ah, oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, she's, uh, she doesn't need to be doing that, but... Uh, Do you still take the bus to work? From time to time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, I, uh, I have, uh, I, I carpool a lot of times. There's some people that work on the hill that live just nearby where my parents are. But uh, a lot of the times, uh, my parents live right on a, a major bus route. And oh, great. Rather than, uh, you know, drive in or take a cab sometimes, uh, I'll just... Uh, uh, I'll just hop on the bus. Yeah, and it's pretty convenient. It's uh, Ottawa has a pretty good bus system, uh, bus system and uh, you know it's uh, it's very convenient and it's it's uh, you know, all the great things about public transit, good for mm -hmm. the environment and, and uh, uh, affordable. So look at you just saving money for the taxpayers are. left, right, and center <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> now you have a pretty big role in the house, though, too. I mean, you um, you did something else um, that for a young person is, is pretty um, uh, impressive. You ran to be speaker against Peter Milliken, who's been speaker for a while, mm -hmm. um, and you became deputy speaker. Is that, did you think you would become speaker? Did you think you had a, a chance of doing it? I mean, you obviously have a history of taking big <laughs> chances. Yeah, I, I thought I had a chance for sure. Yeah. I, I like to Obviously, anything I, I do in life, I try to believe I can do it. I did realize that uh, you know, Speaker Milliken has enjoyed the support of the Commons for uh, a very long time, and and for a reason. You know, he's very, very uh, competent and, and and very good at what he does, and he's got this whole history of parliamentary procedure uh, stored in his brain that that, that is great. But um, you know, just 
uh, I thought that I thought that being a I was an assistant deputy speaker last parliament, so I'd had some experience in the in the chair and some experience presiding over the house, and I thought that I could. Uh, convince my colleagues that 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 was a, a good foundation and that I, I could do a good job as speaker, uh, but uh, uh, the, the my colleagues decided to go with uh, Speaker Milliken again, and I'm very uh, very grateful that I can work with him and, and the other chair, uh, the other presiding officers in capacity as deputy speaker because yeah. it's a great role and, and it's very interesting and it's was it scary? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you the the uh, there are certain times where you really get nervous. Uh, giving speeches, and for me, uh, that was one of them because you're you're speaking to a, a full house. You know, a lot of times when MPs give speeches, there's only 12 or 15 members in the house, mm -hmm. uh, but this was everybody was there, and party leaders were there. My whole caucus was there, cabinet, the prime minister, leader of the opposition, and you know, you've got you've got uh, an opportunity to make your case and impress people. And I found that was uh, I, I usually don't give nervous. I usually don't get nervous when I. Uh, speak publicly at the, now, but that was one time where I, you know, you stand up, you look around, like, oh, holy smokes, this is, <laughs> uh, this is pretty serious, and and uh, try to calm down a little bit. Do you think we try running again? Uh, you know, I, 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 it's a role that's certainly interesting, yeah. for sure. And, and it's only natural. I mean, you can only be speaker for so long, frankly. So there will be a natural opportunity at some point. At some point, yeah. And uh, you know, my my f my primary goal is always to just, you know. Uh, do a good job that uh, uh, in such a way that the voters in Regina Capel decide to reelect me. And that's kind you. of <laughs> my focus. And the big one. Yeah, I, I don't want to kind of think too far yeah. ahead of that because I think that sometimes that's when politicians uh, get in trouble if they're too focused on what they'd like to do. Uh, then sometimes the voters decide, well, that's not what they want them to do, or, or it's not that they're interested. So I. Uh, it's certainly an option that I, I consider a great deal, but uh, I'm enjoying my role right now, and I'm enjoying the, uh, my role in, in serving my constituents, and that's kind of uh, that's that's very rewarding, and, and that's kind of the primary responsibility for being here. I really appreciate that you would take the time to be here. Thanks very oh, much. Oh no, thank you so much for for inviting me. It was a, a great chance to to chat with you. It's been a great great chat with you too. Well, thank you. <laughs>